Have they lost their dang mind? These people are crazy. On the Brother Love Show. A few years ago, tobacco companies sold the world on e-cigarettes, newer, safer, and more efficient ways to deliver nicotine to your brain that would eventually help you quit smoking. Well, now one doctor came up with the crack pen. Rather than smoking cocaine, normally, one could inhale the vape. The crack pen? Did y'all hear that? Wow. Okay, let's go. Paper like an e-cigarette. Dr. Fabian Steinmetz invented the crack pen. He works out of Germany, joins us now. Thanks for staying up late, 2 a.m. there. Uh, this is your baby. Why should it be legal? Yeah, I mean, first of all, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, I mean, we are talking about a medical device. Yeah? The, the war on drugs has not worked, and we need alternatives. I mean, it's quite easy how to regulate cannabis, but it's more difficult how to deal with um, drugs like crack cocaine or heroin. Let me ask you guys something. Would giving anybody more crack or more drugs ever be the answer? I mean, just use the common sense to you, Brother Love Show family. Would giving anybody crack in any type of form, would that be the answer? I think these people are trying to take us backwards, but let's keep going. And we actually learned from a, um, a lot of European cities like um, like Zurich and, and Bern, uh, uh, in Berlin, but also Bern, um, European cities, how you can actually give heroin to people who already have an addiction problem, who already have a substance use disorder. And by, by pharma grade drugs, we actually decrease a lot of risks. And, put, and then we actually thought about how can we do something similar for crack cocaine, which has a very um, low, uh, very short duration. And then mm. we came up with this type of um, um, yeah, e-cigarette. But so far it's only a concept for a medical device. So nothing I'm developing in my garage and nothing I use or sell. It's, it's a fascinating point, and you, you make a great point. If the, the war on drugs hasn't worked, hasn't worked in the United States, you've got huge problems associated with buying drugs, using drugs. Benefits of the crack pens will not contain potentially harmful compounds, only contain crack and the vape juice, some kind of co cocaine. Ain't crack the bad compound? Okay, these people think we stupid, y'all will contain a specific dose, number of hits, and as you point out, available through a doctor's office. I got to say, though, Oxycontin. This is amazing, y'all, that we got to, we can sit here and read that they're trying to give people, it only contains crack and vape juice. And this is on your news. This is on your news. Was available through a do doctor's office, and that then created huge, huge problems here in America, in Europe as well. How does the crack pen not do the same thing? Yeah, that's, that's a very good question. And uh, it's actually very complex if you analyze the opioid crisis in uh, the US or uh, also in, in Canada. And there are two sides. And the media very often only reports the one side. I mean, the one where pharma sales reps are basically lying to physicians and then they prescri uh, prescribe Oxycontin instead of aspirin and ibuprofen, etc. Um, this, is, this is one part of the truth. But, but the other part is uh, prohibition. I mean, this is um, the reason why people, if they don't get their pills, go to the black market and then they poison themselves with illegal fentanyl formulations. And um, maybe for the U.S., if you would like to uh, launch such a product, you would need some extra rules. Hmm. Um, for example, I don't see a point uh, for prescription drug advertisement in TV. This is something um, in Europe rather uncommon. And I definitely would not like anyone to advertise for any psych. So he want to give all those people that we see in a vape pen with crack. Think about this, y'all. Look what they're showing. They're showing, and, and, and it's amazing how they're showing a lot of uh, brown colored people smoking crack. This is amazing. Let's just keep going. And then let's ask ourselves this one question, two people. Where are we going to get the cocaine from? Where, who are we going to buy? Where? And who's going to pay for it? The community's going to pay for it? So now we're going to use our hard-earned tax dollars to buy uh, crap vape pens for crackheads? I don't know, people. Let's carry on. Microactive substances at all. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably not going out on a limb here to think that you wouldn't really have to advertise this. If for a certain population, you offered legal cocaine, it would, people would find you um, in that case. But 
you're, you sort of are also looking both at the way that Zurich and other cities have dealt with drugs, but then there's this argument about the way people have been trying to quit smoking cigarettes. Um, success rates for different methods to quit smoking. Uh, E-cigarettes is only at 13%. The patch and nicotine gum are north of 20%. And obviously quitting right, cold turkey right. is only 5%. Would it not be better to find a way to, to sort of give people not the exact same high? If you're, if you're handing them cocaine and vape juice, it, it just feels like people are going to use more cocaine. Why, why wouldn't they use more cocaine? Think about that. Look what he's saying. He just look look at the the, the rates right here. The the e cigarettes not working. The patch is not working. The nicotine gum is not working. Cold turkey only work at five percent. Why would giving them crack in a vape pen stop them from wanting to have crack? We are in bizarre world, people. We are definitely the time. We are we are flipped all over. We are flipped our wig back. Okay. I mean, the, the, main, the main harm reduction is um, uh, to have a controlled substance. And because you get this from a doctor, you actually have a serious conversation about your health. I mean, we're talking about people who are homeless, who haven't seen a doctor for, for years. So by talking to a doctor, he actually can help you, for example, to lower a, do a dose. To a so we gonna, we, who going to pay to get these homeless people to go to a doctor to get prescribed crack pens? And how, how does a homeless person refill this description of crack pens and how many, and who's going to pay for it, people? Just comorbidities to help you, uh, to, um, to it's, for example, find a social it's, worker. It's, it's fascinating. If you, if you actually get one to market, come back and talk to us about it. Unfortunately, Doc, we got to run. We only got a couple of seconds left. Thank you. Thanks for being with us this week. We'll see you on Monday, Dan. Thank you.